The Romance of the Ranchos. Beverly Hills, 1852. Indians besiege widow at Rancho. Beverly Hills, 1919. Douglas Fairbanks buys hilltop land for home. Beverly Hills, 1941. Beverly Hills, one of the world's wealthiest cities. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos. Dramatizing the romance and adventure of the history of our Southland. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, uncovers another fascinating story of events and people that make up the romance of the rancho. The interesting historical facts which form the background for our drama tonight were obtained from the vast files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. And those files are growing at the rate of approximately 1,500 documents every business day. For the essential facts affecting land ownership must be gathered from these recordings and from the records of some 50 different public offices and transferred to the Title Insurance Company records daily in order that the company can ensure your ownership of property against any other's claims. However, it is from the older records that the facts forming the basis of these radio stories are taken. And here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y señores. Our story tonight deals with a part of the Southland we know as Beverly Hills, but which was once the Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas, or the gathering place of the waters. Let's relive the romance of this rancho. It was about the time of the end of Spanish control of California, 1821, that Maria Rita Valdez and her soldier husband came to live on the Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas. They built a home near the present location of Sunset and Alpine in Beverly Hills. For a few years, their life was peaceful. Then, one day at 1828, Jose Antonio Carrillo, alcalde of Los Angeles, visited the rancho. Well, Antonio Maria Rita, buenos dias. Don Jose Antonio Carrillo, welcome to my home. Gracias. Gracias. Oh, this is an honor. The alcalde of the Pueblo calling on me. What brings you so far? I had to journey this way on a boundary dispute, so I thought I would pay my respects to you. Express my sorrow at the loss of your late esteemed husband, Sargento Villa. Thank you, senor. I would have been here before, but my duties kept me so busy. I know, senor. It is quite all right. Is there anything I can do to assist you? No, I... Do not think so, senor, unless, unless you could help me to get a grant for this land. You see, I have no real title to it, although we have made it our home for these 20 years. You see, see, of course, I shall be glad to do whatever I can. Oh, gracias, Don Jose. I should feel safer. You uh, are alone here? No. My kinsman, Luciano Valdez, he lives on the land, too. Uh, but uh, here in this house? Oh, no, senor, you forget. I have children. Ah, si, 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 nine, is it not? It is not, senor, it is eleven. The widow finally received her first title to the land of Rodeo de las Aguas in 1831, when citizen Vincente Sanchez who was the alcalde of Los Angeles, granted the land jointly to Maria and her kinsman, Luciano. But this arrangement could not last very long, for Luciano was a hard neighbor to get along with. And over there, Mariano, we shall plant a long line of vines. Oh, this cañada will be our vineyard, and you shall help me care for it. 
Oh, I see, Mama. It will be very fine. Here, here, here Maria. What is going on here? Buenos dias, Luciano. What do you mean, what is going on here? Are you planning to plant vines in my cañada? Your cañada? I don't know what you mean. This is my land as much as yours. I have spent three months clearing this cañada so that I may plant my vines. You shall plant no vines here. This is my cañada. And I mean to keep it for my own use. Luciano. Oh, how can you do these things to me? I say nothing when you move your house near mine, obstructing the front of mine. I even let it go when you run my cattle off the only watering place on the land. And they wander off onto my neighbor's ranchos. But this is too much. Too much? See, it is too much. When I find you trying to use up my land... It is not your land. And if it were, you did not try to stop me from clearing it. Oh, no. For three months, you have watched me and my family working on it. Only now, when I want to plant the vines, I make a place for the object. Ah, you wish to complain about me, huh? Well, go ahead. I dare you to. Who would listen to you? A foolish woman. Why, well, you cannot even read or write. Just because you can read and write. Just because you were once schoolmaster of the Pueblo. Is that any reason for you to lord it over everybody else? I am a man of culture. It is beneath me to associate with persons of such little education. You will kindly remove yourself from this canyada. I have told you it is mine. And that is enough. Madre de Dios, what am I to do? Oh, my <laughs> Don't cry. I'll fix him. You leave Madre alone, Diablo. You leave her alone. Oh, Mariano. Oh, no, oh, Mariano. Oh, 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 here, stop that, young girl. Mariano, stop you stop must it. not. No, stop. You leave mother here. You leave my mother alone. Stop. Stop. Oh, oh, my head. Stop the murder. Stop. 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 Oh. You won't come back for a while, Madre. Mariano, you should not tell. No, Madre. I'm sorry. I, I won't do it again. Unless she comes back. <laughs> Doña Maria Rita Valdez de Villa finally took up Luciano's dare and registered a complaint with the governor. It was subsequently turned over to the Los Angeles Ayuntamiento. And one day, Maria heard their verdict. And so, in view of the complaint against him, also in view of the fact that he does not own enough cattle to receive ownership of land anyway, the said Luciano Valdez is ordered to vacate the property of the widow Doña Maria Rita Valdez de Villa, called San Antonio, or Rodeo de las Aguas. Oh, gracias. Gracias, Your Honor. However, Maria Valdez must pay Luciano Valdez for the property which he'll give up. Therefore, the council has appointed two appraisers, Jesus Diaz and Tomas Talamantes, to place a value on said property. The appraisal of the property shall be carried on at the earliest possible moment. And besides, senor, this peach tree, that is mine. See? And here are two poles I use for farming purposes. They must be counted, too. What do you say, Jesus? Oh, very well, Tomas. Uh, two pesos for the tree and uh, 50 centavos for the poles. Very well. 15 pesos for the house. That made a total of uh, 17 pesos and 50 centavos. Is that some factory? Si. Yes, I know. Not much, but uh, very well. See, si, I take it. For $17.50, the dispute was settled. And now, Doña Maria Rita Valdez was sole possessor of Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas. But her only title was from the Los Angeles City Council, and she wished the legal protection of a grant from the governor. And so it was that she talked with Francisco Villa, major domo of the Mission San Gabriel. But, senor, the governor, he will not make a grant to me unless there are 150 head of cattle grazing on the rancho. And there are not, senora? No. I have little over a hundred, and I have no money to buy more. Uh, do you think the governor might overlook the cattle? I hardly think so, senora. It is the law. However, there may be another way to arrange it. But how? Suppose I arrange for you to borrow enough cattle to make up the difference. Senor, is it possible? I think so, senora. I shall take up the matter immediately. And, too, I have another idea. We shall send your kinsman, 
Captain Villa, straight to Governor Alvarado to present your petition. And that should help your case. Ah, senor, I do not know how to thank you. You needn't, senora. I am happy to help you. You have spent many years on this land. You have put much work and toil into it. It is only right that it should be yours. And I shall see that it is. Capitan Villa journeyed northward toward Monterey, armed with Doña Maria Rita's precious petition. On the way, he stopped at San Juan Bautista to see General Jose Castro, prefect of the district. So you see, Jose, I go to present the petition of the widow Valdez to Governor Alvarado. So oh, the widow Valdez. Well, I know her well. When I was south with my troops, I was guest at her home. Oh, she's a fine woman. I like her. Uh, Capitan, I tell you what I will do. Uh, I go with you. I shall speak to Alvarado myself. Perhaps I can help and repay her kindness to me. With such powerful friends helping her, the grant for Maria Valdez was assured. Soon, Capitan Villa brought the precious title papers back to Los Angeles. The future looked brighter for Maria Valdez, but more misfortune came quickly. In 1846, news came that the American armies were closing in on Los Angeles. At the time, Maria Valdez was staying in a house she owned on Main Street in Los Angeles. Late one evening, her son rushed to her. Mama, Mama, we, we must fly. The Americanos, they're coming. We, we must flee as fast as we can. Oh, but Mariano, they will not hurt us. There may be a battle, Mama. Guns, cannon, the city may be destroyed. Oh. We must flee for our lives, Mama. Hurry, there is no time to lose. I have an ox cart waiting. Oh, but Mariano, my clothes, my belongings... No, my... no, no, Mama, there is no time for that. Leave everything. Take only what you will need to, to keep you warm. Hurry, Mama. Oh. Wildly, many Los Angeles residents fled before the American army. With them, Doña Maria Rita Valdez. Behind her, she left everything she had, including the title papers to the Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas. As soon as she saw there was no danger, she came back. It was to find her house had been broken into by looters. It had been robbed, pillaged. Mariano, they have taken everything. Oh, but oh no, no, they cannot have taken my papers, the papers for the rancho. Where, where do you give them, Madre? In the trunk, the big trunk, in the corner. Oh, oh here is the trunk. Oh, see, the are the papers? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Mama. The trunk is empty. <laughs> Title papers were gone. Victim of wartime looters. California, Indian, or American, no one knew which. Their loss was felt deeply. When after California became a state in the Union, the Board of Land Commissioners met to pass on all land titles in California. Maria Valdez had no proof of ownership. But once again, loyal friends came to the support of the aging widow. One by one, they testified on her behalf. Jose Antonio Carrillo. She... The Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas has belonged to Doña Maria Rita for many years, at least since 1828, for it was in that year that I visited her. Her soldier husband had just died, and there she was with her 11 children. Francisco Villa. It was in 1839, some years after her relative Luciano had moved from the rancho, that Doña Maria Rita wished to obtain a grant from Governor Alvarado. I had already obtained for her enough cattle to make up the necessary 150 head. Jose Castro. See, si, uh, Capitan Villa and I went to see the governor in Monterey, and he graciously acceded to our request. He gave me the title papers, granting to Doña Maria Rita about one league of land. One by one, friends and relatives offered their help. And finally, after many weary days of waiting, the board announced the decision. Doña Maria Rita Valdez de Villa, it is the decision of the United States Board of Land Commissioners that your claim to the title of the land known as the Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas is confirmed. The land is yours, madam. <laughs> Yes.
Yes, Doña Maria's loss of her title papers almost cost her her rancho. Her title was in doubt for years until the Land Commission finally determined that it was valid. This was not an uncommon situation in those early days. There were no public offices in which title transfers could be recorded. In fact, ownership of land frequently passed by a mere transfer of possession without any written document. When California was admitted to the Union in 1850, one of the first acts of the state legislature was to set up public offices in which records of title transfers might be kept and to require that all transfers must be by deed or other written instruments. The theory was that an intending purchaser of property could then examine the public records and determine that the seller actually owned clear title to the land. Unfortunately, it is often impossible to establish true ownership of property from these public records. Deeds and other title documents are sometimes lost or destroyed, sometimes never placed on record, sometimes defectively acknowledged or executed, sometimes forged or executed by minors or incompetents, so that even though they have the appearance of valid legal documents, actually they are not. For these reasons, some further assurance of ownership is required by persons dealing in land today. The policy of title insurance meets that need. It stabilizes land titles, makes them marketable, enables you to know that you really own the title you pay for. Now, the Rancho Rodeo de Sawas, which she calls San Antonio, really belonged to Doña Maria Rita. And she settled down with a great army of relatives to raise her cattle and cultivate her garden. But trouble still pursued her. Early one day in 1852, the workers in the garden were startled by... Indians! 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 Run, Indians! run for the house, run! Hurry inside, get inside. Pedro, call everybody into the house. Now lock all the doors, barricade the windows, and get down the guns. See, si, see, si. inside quickly. The guns are in the rack, powder in the cask in the corner. Hurry. Here, close the door. Now there, put that table across the window. Leave enough room to sight the rifle. Hurry. There they are, behind the sycamore. Oh, be careful. So, you want to fight, do you, you heathen? All right, our bullets are as good as yours. Stop, will you? <laughs> I'll get you next time. Pedro, a rifle for me, and keep bringing up the ammunition. Yes, si, senor. Look out, here they come, out in the open. They block, they block. Ah, we have driven them back to cover, but they will try again. Hurry, Pedro, more ammunition. Pedro, more ammunition. We've held them off for three hours, senor, but I don't. The ammunition is running low. We cannot hold them off much longer, senor. Who oh, we must. You know what it will mean if we do not. But the ammunition won't last much longer. You then save it. Don't waste a shot. Hold your fire until they try to attack again. What would our hell, senor? Senor, I'll go for help. No, Pedro, you cannot. I can do it, senor. If I can sneak out without them seeing me, I can crawl down the beach to the swamp and get away to the nearest ranch. No. Perhaps you could, senor. No, I will not listen. They will kill you, and he's just a boy, a no, young no. boy. They will not see me, senor, because I am just very small. It may be our only chance, senor. I, I try myself. No, no one shall go. Perhaps our shots will attract attention and help will come, but no one will go. It will be suicide. Here come again. So back to your post quickly. Pedro, more ammunition. We've driven them back into Grove again. Thank heavens there are only three of them. We must be prepared for the next assault. Pedro, bring more powder. Pedro. Pedro. Oh, where is he? Pedro. Oh, senor. He is gone. He has slipped out the door while we were busy fighting. Oh. Look, there he goes, creeping down the trench. Madre de Dios, do they see him? I don't know. They haven't made any move yet. Oh. oh they're shooting at us. He's almost to the swamp. They can't see him from there. He's hidden by the trees now. He's getting up. He's running. Oh. Oh. They haven't seen him. They haven't seen him, senor. Now we have a chance. Driven him back again. Senor, have you any ammunition left? Yours one shot. Here, somebody bring up more ammunition. There is no more, senor. What? No more? Then when they attacked again... See? Oh, what has happened to Pedro? He has only been gone an hour. It might take him that long to get to the nearest rancho. No, no, he is a fast runner. He should be back by now. Forty years not. No. Senora, 
This one shot. If you wish, I can spare you any... I am not afraid, senor. I have not lived here all these years without being used to facing death. You are a brave woman, senor. I salute you. They're creeping up again, senor. Uh, we cannot fight them now. This is the end, senor. No, no, listen. What is that? The Indians have stopped. They... Why, they're running the other way. They're making for the hills. Look. Look at horses. See, it's help coming. Hey, they got through. Hey, they got through. Look at them. The rancheros charging at full speed. We're saved. We're saved. <laughs> This was the last of such harrowing experiences for the owners of Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas. But even so, the courageous Doña Maria Rita Valdez found managing a great rancho too much for her declining health. And so, in 1854, she sold her land to two neighbors, Benjamin D. Wilson, famous in early California as Don Benito, and Henry Hancock. The full price for the site of what is now Beverly Hills was roughly about $1,300. And now, at last, the Americans took over its development, they planted 2,000 acres of wheat, and the first year reaped a golden harvest. Then came drought, two years without water. Oh, just look at it, Bill. A withered plain. The swamp's dried up. No flowers, nothing. Yeah, Ben's pretty sad. Your wheat crop's ruined. Ruined? Well, there isn't any wheat crop. I'm afraid this ranch is going to be a white elephant. Don Benito! Don Benito, yes, senor! Yes. I've been looking for you. Well, yes, what is it, Jose? Two senores from Los Angeles. They're at the house to see you. Yeah, well, what do they want? They are from the Pioneer Oil Company. They want to see you about this land. They think there might be oil here. Oil? Man, oil here? Why, Ben, you'd be rich. Holy smokes, oil. Where are they? <laughs> But the oil bubble burst quickly. Wells were drilled, but nothing of any consequence was found. And then, slowly, newcomers came to live on the ranch. New names appeared to be associated with Rodeo de las Aguas. Workman, Whitworth, Edison A. Benedict, who acquired Benedict Canyon, Edward A. Pruce, Ruland, Bune, Everly, Francis Temple. Finally, in 1869, Pruce and Temple sold their land to the de las Aguas Land Association. Ambitious plans for a town called Santa Maria were never realized. The association gasped for life for a short time and then peacefully expired. The rancher went to Hamel and Denker, two Los Angeles businessmen who prospered for a while by raising lima beans on their land. With the coming of the railroad, the Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas was flooded with eager lot buyers. Little towns mushroomed around the railroad stations. Morocco, Cahuenga, Sunset. More ambitious plans were made. The boom of the 80s, however, collapsed and the towns faded back into obscurity. It was not until 1906 that the heirs and successors of Henry Hamill and Andrew Denker handed over their rancho to another group whose plans were to prove successful. Here's the Rodeo Land Water Company, Mr. Clark. And there's a map of the town laid out. Beverly Hills. Uh -huh. Well, looks well laid out, Mr. Green. <laughs> Thanks. It ought to be. We got the best man we could for the job. Wilbur Cook, landscape architect New York, planned it. Uh, Dan Halliday engineer did actually or not. Mm, pretty name, too, Beverly Hill. Yeah, I had something to do with that myself. See, um, I read a newspaper account of President Taft's visit to Beverly Farms in Massachusetts. Well, I liked the name so much, I just rushed right down here and persuaded my associates to name our town Beverly Hills. Uh, since this was Hilly Land we were subdividing. Mm, well, yes, it's fine. I I'll tell you. I like your new town. I'll take two lots I looked on. Now, let's see, it's uh, Crescent Drive, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So, uh, well, I guess I'll be your first customer. I'll buy him. Henry C. Clark became the first homeowner of the new town of Beverly Hills in 1907. Rapidly, the subdivision grew. Then, one day, a real estate man and his potential customer walked up a hill overlooking Doña Maria Rita Valdez's old land. Let's just climb up there a little further to the crest. Must be a wonderful view. Okay. I don't see how you do it. You take these hills like they're nothing. Who says in your condition? I must be getting old. You should be in the moving picture business. <laughs> That's tenuous enough to keep you in trim. <laughs> well, it must be the kind of pictures you do. Here. Let me lend your hand. Thanks. There. We're up. Yep. Thank goodness. Well, what do you think of that view? Just look at that. I've never seen anything like it. It's perfect. I think of having a home here. <laughs> it's just what I hope you're thinking of. 
Just imagine how it'd look landscape. A home right over there. Overlooking the entire valley. That's a real bargain. You don't have to tell me. I'm sold. Just make out the papers to uh, Douglas Fairbank. When Douglas Fairbanks bought the site for Pickfair on April 22nd, 1919, he started the great movie star invasion which has made Beverly Hills one of the most celebrated residential communities in the world. Quickly, more and more famous people made it their home. The population grew by leaps and bounds. In 1924, the population was 5,000. Quickly, the Rancho Rodeo de las Aguas blossomed into hundreds of mansions, villas, homes. The building boom finally reached such proportions that it prompted one prominent resident of Beverly Hills to say, Well, lots are sold so quickly and often out here that they're put through escrow made out to the 12th owner. Now, they couldn't possibly make out a deed for each purchaser. Besides, you wouldn't have time to read it. In ten minutes, he owned the lot. You're having no money, don't worry, agents. If they can just get a couple of dollars down or an old overcoat or a shotgun or anything to act as first payment, second-hand Fords are considered A1 collateral, too. Will Rogers may have been spoofing a little, but the boom brought almost 30,000 residents to live in this, one of the most beautiful and one of the wealthiest of residential communities. Today, the land which was once the domain of the widow Valdes and her 11 children is the pride of the Southland, the home of many of its famous people, the distinguished city of Beverly Hills. Such is the romance of the ranchos. Frank Graham will be heard in just a moment, but first, here's something to think about. In these days of rising costs and taxes, every dollar counts to all of us. Doubly interesting, then, is the fact that the rates at which title insurance and trust company is able to offer you necessary title protection are very considerably lower than those prevailing almost anywhere else in the United States. There are two factors that make these low rates possible. First, the size and completeness of title insurance and trust company's record files and the efficiency of its hundreds of trained workers. Second, the fact that this company writes a greater volume of title insurance than any other title company in the world. Whatever the value of the property you're interested in or the type of policy you require, the rate you pay for title insurance is less than it would be elsewhere because of these considerations. And the protection it brings you is not surpassed by comparable policies issued anywhere. And what's the story for next week, Frank? Next week, we're going to take you for a visit to the ranchos San Pedro and Palos Verdes, where a dispute between two of the great families of early California blazed for many years. It's a story I know you'll want to hear, so be with us again next Wednesday night. Until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. Romance of the Ranchos is a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the Wandering Vaquero. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.